it's a really a humbling feeling to even think that we've done it for 100 years. And I'm, I feel happy and lucky, actually, to be part of that pursuit of 100 years. When you think about all the people that came from the school and how they've affected our society, our culture, it's quite amazing. It's really quite amazing in just 100 years. Conrad Voxman personifies idea of new technologies. He was world renowned for his technological ability and his innovations. And he, in a way, predicted the age of the engineer as architect that we see today. Oh, there's all kinds of things that were interesting happening at that time. Voxman was there, but nobody knew it. He was a super private, and he was working with a group of students in the armory. Edward Ralston was a really divisive figure. He had no middle ground. There was nobody that was ambivalent about him, and he was definitely in the Expressionist camp, and the people that were in that camp loved him. Paul Williams becomes the first FAIA African-American architect. He has created a practice and developed architecture to create a society that is so much more harmonious through design. Paul Williams is a, a pioneer, basically way ahead of his time, and he was a real gentleman, and his architecture is much respected, and he's just now beginning to get his place in history that he deserves. Welton Beckett. We both had internships through USC at Welton Beckett. He was our first boss. He was amazing. He knew what the industry wanted, he just went after it. Charles Luckman, he had a really entrepreneurial uh, strain through him, and basically he helped make Luckman and Pereira a world famous firm. Luckman is a more of a businessman. William Pereira was the other side of the Charles Luckman William Pereira team. He was a planner, an architect, a developer. All of these things rolled into one at a time when that was not usual. Los Angeles Airport wouldn't have been possible without his vision. The University Park campus here at USC was his vision to make the, the campus a part of nature, to make nature a part of the campus, was his idea. Bill Kreisel's work, I think, is really, really seminal in thinking about the butterfly roof, which it celebrates the roof, but also liberates the ground plan, enables uh, a clear story from the Tiger Tail House to the Twin Palms development in Palm Springs. You see the striking figure of this uh, butterfly roof. William Kreisel typifies the global view of architecture, bringing it to USC and to LA. He played a huge role in the development of the modern movement in Los Angeles. Soriano was a character. He was very unconventional, and he also was very controversial. He was borderline antisocial. <laughs> uh, I would say more than borderline antisocial. But he was inspiring to a lot of people like Pierre Koning, who took uh, Soriano's approach of steel architecture, of using new materials in modernism primarily for residential use. He was really a, an uncompromising idealist. Pierre Koning was a visionary, was way ahead of his time, saw the future of prefabrication and production that we now see in operation in architecture today in terms of mass production of architecture, the use of steel, the use of new materials, the use of factory-made production techniques rather than the custom-made, handcrafted houses and, and buildings that we were used to at the time that he was practicing. That's unbelievable. Where did he hide the cables? Where did he hide the plumbing? Like, where, where did all that stuff go? He was the first person that let me understand uh, the, the concept of architects wearing all black. I found that uh, to be a, a compelling example of architectural fashion. My grandparents lived in a Buff and Hensman home. Buff and Hensman are, I think, the paradigmatic example of USC innovation. We're really instrumental in defining the Case Study House program and defining mid-century modernism in Los Angeles. A little more elegant, a little less rigid in, in interpretation, a little more exploratory, probably less dogmatic. I remember him as being like a, a real wonderful guy. Edward Killingsworth was a leader of the Case Study House program because he introduced new ideas to it that others had not seen 
He designed six projects and his work was phenomenal in that the ideals that he explored later developed into much more significant commercial scale. He was a mentor and he um, was a friend and I now have the honor of being the steward of Ed's iconic 1955 office building that he designed to show his clients what he could do with his timeless international architecture uh, with large expanses of glass, minimal structural elements, transparent planes between interior and exterior. It's exciting to see the development and the growth of the Heritage Conservation School here. When I attended school in the early 80s, it wasn't even mentioned as a career path. And so the development is phenomenal that now we have this leading heritage conservation program. A. Quincy Jones was uh, much loved. He had a knack for understanding people, and he had a knack for making them work together. So he was uh, a real force for the growth of the school in a very critical time. Quincy designed some really beautiful houses, but all the ideas about indoor-outdoor, bleeding the definition between an outdoor space and indoor space were very much a part of his work. Outstanding guy. Of course, we, we were rebels. We, uh, we wanted to get rid of all of those case study guys. I'm so proud of the Landscape Architecture Program at USC. It has taken years and commitment by many, many people to create the reality today of this really amazing program. And it was started really by Emmett Wimple. I know more about plants and the exterior environment than a lot of landscape architects because his class was incredible. Emma was really training students to think about the landscape and to give us solutions and problem statements that really integrated architecture and landscape architecture. And a wonderful guy, a wonderful character. Garrett Ekpo, he was trying to introduce the ideas of modernism into landscape architecture. He was the combination between a painter and a landscape architect. He really looked at painting and sort of abstraction that you would have in a painting. They found ways to embody that in his drawings, how he communicated his ideas, but also in the actual physical landscape architecture. And now back to the School of Architecture in the way of uh, the legacy of the building science program. Building science plays an important part in the future of sustainability and efficiencies. Ralph Knowles was um, immensely ahead of his time in understanding environmental issues. Is one of the primary forces in the formation of architecture at a very deep conceptual level and at a much more pragmatic level and was decades in front of his time. He was running this very radical program which was um, interested in a whole new notion of the dynamic notion of architecture as it connected to natural forces. We had a big heliodon down in the basement and we did the solar envelope where we tracked how our building shapes affected the environment. He was thinking about equal rights to the sun. How every single person had a equal right to sunshine and how that would lead to city form. And it was literally the, the first building block of who I am as an architect. And that's, I guess, you could pay no higher honor to a school than that. USC has been this catalyst for those thinkers who don't look at the world and look at incremental change, but who look at radical change. Downtown Los Angeles has probably the greatest concentration of significant contemporary architecture in the world. Frank Geary and Disney Concert Hall, Caltrans Building, which is Tom Maines, that's an extraordinary thing to have right there compressed together. The way that Disney Hall started as the most significant concert hall in the world in terms of the technical sound and then built beauty around it. Um, to take something as state as a government building and to take a set budget like Tom Main did with the Caltrans building, but to add new materials. Um, I think we've seen in Frank Fury, I think we've seen in uh, Tom Main, we've seen uh, in Rios' work, Mark Rios' work at, with Grand Park. You know, it's become the place where people celebrate New Year's. It's become, you know, the icon for Los Angeles, and these buildings are the icons that surround it. USC continues to be a, a force for me in the work that I do. It was the beginning of a, um, a whole new aspect of who I was as a human being. How could it not mean something to me? You don't have to. I'm just about to cry. I was like, we're, 
but it's up. I love the guild. There's a whole group of people that care about the students here. The guild is this amazing group of people. Some alumni and some just supporters of the USC School of Architecture that go to the mat to raise money, provide opportunities, internships, open their doors to students. Not only are they getting information and learning about how to become young professionals and get their first job, but they're also meeting an incredible network of leadership that potentially could be your next employer. So it's vital to the school. It's been really helpful having that direct contact with people who are willing and able to give back. It definitely inspires me <laughs> to give back once I graduate as well. One of the best things that they've done for us is putting on the firm fair in, in the spring. The opportunities that they put on for workshops and resume building and um, sort of re refining the interview process and how you go about applying for jobs is really beneficial. Well, it's the dinner, isn't it? That's what brings the, the alumni back. I think leaders emerge. And so I think the best the university can do is to expose you to the attributes of a leader and the attributes of being a good follower. This school exposed me to those different attributes. When it comes down to leadership, I think of like managing people and managing your time. You're having to adapt and learn about how to work with teams of people to accomplish great tasks. You start to realize that architecture is such a collaborative profession, you can only succeed if you collaborate. We hired three people from the USC Career Fair. The people that we found had such leadership and skills that we didn't see in the other people. The architecture is so much beyond design. It's people skills, it's leadership, it's organization. We found that with the USC architecture students. So we're engaged in the business of future, but future is not an easy business. So business of future is dangerous, is a risk. Our program has given tremendous courage to our students and to be able to speculate on the future. Whatever form of future that will evolve. They're encouraged to think for themselves. They're encouraged to be proactive. The biggest change that my education here at the USC School of Architecture was when I got involved in the Solar Decathlon. This school is a school that has uh, continually tried to transform itself. And basically that vision of the future is always open for change, but it, it does have a continuity and it does have a vision of being the best. First place winner in architecture goes to the University of Southern California. It really prepared me well to, to understand that architecture is diverse, it's, it's not one way. It, the school is incredibly diverse and international. It's really the people that make the school wonderful. I can see how hard the faculty works to prepare these young people. They're very dedicated to giving these, these young people the best education they can. It is the Trojan family. Every time I walk onto this campus, it's like going home. And um, it's a very personal place to me because this is, to me, all about family. My sister goes here. She's a freshman. And both of my parents went here. And they actually met here. I feel more connected to my family now that I've gone to school here. It's been a fantastic experience to see how this Trojan family is something that truly does exist and exists at a global level. USC School of Architecture. USC School of Architecture. That's kind of hard. USC School of Architecture. USC School of Architecture is the best possible place to prepare you for the real world. It's the best experience I've had to date. USC School of Architecture is growing. It's a moving target. USC School of Architecture is family. It's part of me and it is home. I honestly can't say who I would be if it hadn't been for my five years here. I, I don't know who I would be. This school empowered me. It didn't entitle me, 
it empowered me. Each of these private stories, as they collect, are, is finally the, the value of an institution at any given time.